as I've said ad nauseum, people say, what do you do? I tell them, and then they're like, well, you know, and it's okay, whatever. And then if they get to know me better, in one case, it took a guy seven years, but eventually they all ask this, what exactly do you do? I buy things that go up and I sell things that go down. Now, sometimes, obviously, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but lately, when it, once again, in crypto, he tried to say, or the shit coins especially, it's been just doing that. Now, every time I talk about those altcoins, they seem to stop rallying. But the fine art of buying things that go up and selling things that go down. I do all my own artwork, in case you're wondering. What do you call those things where they actually like take a picture of this and sell it or something? We should uh, we should do that. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about these shit cords. So I just grabbed some trades from one of my accounts and I have one from another account I'll show you too. And eventually I need to go through, through all of them and, uh, but I think this is a pretty good representation because there's one in particular I want to show you. But I also want to show you some of the other stuff I'm into. IOTX, the entry was here, and then the stop out was there. So I want to kind of clue you into my reasoning on some of these things. And this one, quite frankly, when I was working on my presentation for tonight, I said, you know what? I'm just going to bail out on this one. And it wasn't that fantastic to begin with. So I didn't want a stinker in for tonight's show, but said, you know, I think it's probably important that I show you that I bailed out. And, and that's the other thing too, is you might want to sing like nobody's listening and dance like nobody's watching, but trade like somebody's watching. And so it's like, okay, I'm going to have to show this portfolio tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and bail out on this thing because I don't like it. And then decide it's probably a good idea to show you anyway. Here's Cody. You know what they do? I have no idea. <laughs> but there's the buy and that's, there's the sell. And I think my reasoning was it had pulled back in here. So let's see where that is. The buy, yeah, the buy was here. It was just a pullback. I hadn't quite got back to the 30 yet. And I ended up selling out here. Now, I didn't give it a whole lot of room. And if memory serves on this one, I just took a stab and I might have been a little aggressive and got it a little too early. But it's one of those he who fights and runs away lives to fight another day type of thing. And by the way, I am long this one once again. I was talking to one of you guys earlier. I think you are too. So I hope, I hate to use that word, but I hope and I think we're going to do okay. Let's just see. I hope we do okay, I should say. Here's another one. That's kind of mediocre on this one. And the entry was at 11.07 and I stopped out at 10.60 or just flat out exited it. And it wasn't a fantastic relative strength type of play. And the, the point is in some of these that I'm showing you, the relative strength plays, and we're gonna go look at them live in a few minutes and see what we can find. But in this particular case, I got in there and I was out in a couple of days and I think I might've made a couple of pennies on this, but not enough to brag about. And the other thing was, and this is a, probably the best thing to show you, but it maybe shows that there's a little human nature in me and like, what the hell, you know, let's just give it a shot. But it wasn't fantastic. And it was improving though. The RF was pretty good. And I had some leftover money because my portfolio was, was nearly filled with slots, so to speak. And I had a half a slot left. And instead of just sitting on that half a slot, I was like, well, this one's kind of strong. Let's just for S and G's go ahead and make that trade. You got to be careful with that S and G kind of trading because you can get into trouble really, really quick. But I figure, what the heck? You know, when the, when the crypto's really running, it's worth doing a little S and G stuff. So here's the Adam thirty eight seventy six, and I got out at thirty seven ninety three. Notice something? Well, that's I got in less than what I got out. So I bought back here, and then I ended up bailing out on it here and my reasoning was i sold it based on prettier girl swapping and i bought back while working on these slots bought back oh yeah i bought it back so while i was working on this they had a big rally in adam atom and then i bought it back but at the time when i sold it was a it was a case of well let's put together the best team we have. Now, keep in mind, 
relative strength trading, and we're not we're not using an indicator, okay? It's not RSI or something like that. It's just the strongest and the strongest rated by day over day change, and also by looking at the charts. Is and sometimes what you'll do is you'll just say, okay, well, this one's up the least or not up much from where I got in, but these other ones are really running. So I'm going to get rid of this one, and we might be back in it tomorrow, but I'm going to get rid of it for now and go out with a prettier girl or a guy, whatever you prefer. And if you prefer both, as Dennis Miller says, you're a greedy bastard. So I did get back in here because I thought it looked kind of interesting. Now, it's not a perfect setup, and I'll show you a more perfect setup, and when we go through the live charts, we'll see what we can find. Hey, Big Dave, you kind of suck. Why should it be impressed? Yeah, pretty much every trade, not too impressive. Well, channeling Churchill, trading is going from one failure to another without any loss of enthusiasm. By the way, most of these were put on last Saturday and Sunday, and I did put those portfolios out last week, just so you'll know, just in case anyone's saying, hey, Dave, this is all in hindsight. Well, so far, you're not impressed with this hindsight. <laughs> but as Churchill said, trading is going from one failure to another without any loss of enthusiasm. And I think that's why I'm a good cryptocurrency trader for now. And I was talking to one of you guys earlier, and you're like, you know, I'm going to put a lot more money into crypto. It's like, eh, you know, you can make a lot of money in these things without having a lot of money in these things. And, and I tell you what, I'm, I'm getting that bug too, where I want to throw real money at it as opposed to this play money. But I think that once you start doing that, it begins to change a little bit. So what I'm trying to do is grow a small account and remain flippant in it because it's like okay i'm not playing with the you know the grocery buddy or whatever i need this is just shits and giggles type of stuff but again trading is going from one failure to the other without any loss of enthusiasm and again there's the middle capital in that there's also an actual capital but the middle capital is the most dangerous because what will happen is without if you're in the wrong state of mind when that opportunity comes along you're not going to be there to take it so i got into this one on the third of october what day was that sunday i think sunday 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 and i was out the next day of half for a quick little flip now let's take a look at that so i bought here why well it's going up okay and when you have a lot of green in the charts or in the watch list, I should say, for the crypto, you need to think about buying the strongest ones. This is an inefficient market right now. This thing went up 100% over a couple of days. That's not an efficient market, okay? An efficient market is something where everything's kind of priced in, and you've got, I forget how many, but it's something like uh, the ridiculous amount. There's like, I want to say in the thousands of analysts for Apple. Okay, so they're all fighting it out. And, you know, not that Apple can't make any efficient moves, but you've got a lot of people in there and you've got you've got thousands of institutions in there. It's just a really crowded playing field. SAP e -minis. I have a love-hate relationship with those guys. Sometimes, sometimes I love them, sometimes I hate them. Uh, sometimes I love them and they hate my account, you know? By the way, it seems like lately the e-mini trading has been really good and the ETF trading has been really difficult. And it's usually just the opposite. Uh, anybody else notice that? Let me know tonight. Uh, God, you're interested in fleshing out a little bit with you. And then uh, leave a comment below if not. I mean, if you're watching the recording. So anyway, flipped it out the next day. And of course, it, it, it went straight up. But that's fine with me. I don't care because I'm free rolling at this point. And I think... It turned into like a 300% move or just something ridiculous. Comments. It was going up. Yeah, it's made up. It, comments. It was going up. Yeah, it's made up and a joke about a coin that's a joke, but who cares? I made a shit ton, S H Y T ton. Now, what I'm getting at here is they they came up with Bitcoin which a lot of people said was bogus, and some people, it's bogus at 1,000, it's bogus at 2,000, it's bogus at 4,000, it's bogus at 20,000, it's bogus at 50,000, it's bogus at 60,000. Who cares as long as it's going up? So, but as a joke, back in the day, they made up doggy coin, a douche coin, I think as they call it, 
and then they thought it would be funny to make up Gibu New or whatever it's called, Scooby Doo. It's a Japanese dog, similar to the whatever the doggy doji coin is, a doggy coin is, as I call it. So it's a joke about a coin that was a joke, but who cares? Now it's all over the media now, so I don't know if that kind of jinxed it, but it was going up, and I did end up getting out of the rest of my position today, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute, but I'm ready to get back in when the time comes. Here's another one. This one's a little bit more impressive than some of those other ones. Bought at 84, 84, flipped out half at 113.06. Better than a poke in the eye is what I say. So you can see I bought it here. Now, by the way, with this RS stuff, like right here, I'd be less inclined to buy it coming off the lows, especially with a little bit of overhead supply. But when it starts to break out in earnest, I'd be more excited about that. And here's where I flipped it out, and I still have half of the position on. So buying stuff that goes up. I'll drink to that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So the question is, hey Dave, ETF trading difficult how? Well, I do some intraday and probably too much intraday ETF trading where I'm, I'm looking to get in and usually I try to focus. So it seems like if I get outside of these four, I get in trouble. Lab U, Lab D, four pairs. Uh, pairs, my coon ass just slipped out. Pairs, gush and drip. You don't sound like a coon ass. <laughs> Stick around a while, it'll come out. Sox L, Sox S, and Lab D and Lab U. And I figure if I can't make money on those, then I'm not going to make money by adding in more pairs. And every now and then I'll, I'll add, you know, I added in, uh, what's the financial one? FAS, FAS, and FAZ. And uh, I got burnt this week doing that. So why is it difficult? Well, it's just the markets have been choppy and full of whipsaw lately. And maybe the reason ETFs of the uh, S&P is a bit easier is because that market is always choppy and full of whipsaw, but the swings have been big enough, big enough to capitalize on the swings and the whipsaw. So anyway, this is FTM, and you can see I bought it through a different account. And let's see where the buy is. So bought it, sold it at the market, here and then it was originally bought at the market here and i bought it because it was going up now it's also a bit of a, kind of a pullback to the ema a little bit quite a few days in yeah, the pullback but i did like the fact that it was going up by the way this is like a more cleaner setup back here and i might have gotten in here and then stopped out but it's still kind of set up as a bigger picture pullback and if you get that nice rs move then it might be worth a shot. So I did cash out of half of that one. I guess that was yesterday. And then today, as I put together my slides, I was pleasantly surprised to see it was it was there. 